This video deals with the system function. Sometimes also referred as the transfer function. For discrete time systems. So let us say we have an input x of n and we pass it through an LTI system having an impulse response h of n and we say that this h of n characterizes the system fully. So in that case we have an output y of n which is equivalent to x of n convolved with h of n. Now from the convolution property of z transform we have y of z which is equivalent to x of z times h of z. So this h of z is our transfer function and like h of n this also characterizes the system fully. Let us say we are given with one difference equation which is y of n minus 3 by 4 y of n minus 1 plus 1 by 8 y of minus 2 and this is equivalent to x of n which is the input and moreover we are given with the information that the system is at rest that is it does not have any initial conditions and it is also causal. So what would be the transfer function h of z for this system? If you take the z transform of this difference equation we would have y of z minus 3 by 4 and from the time shifting property this would be simply z inverse y of z plus 1 by 8 z minus 2 y of z and this would be equivalent to x of z. We can combine y of z terms with respect to x of z and these would be 1 minus e by 4 z inverse plus 1 by 8 z minus 2. But from here we know that the transfer function h of z that is required over here. This is simply y of z by x of z. Therefore our h of z this would be equal to y of z by x of z. That is we have 1 by 1 minus 3 by 4 z inverse of 1 by 8 z minus 2. Now multiplying and dividing by z square. So this would be z square over z square minus 3 by 4 z plus 1 by 8 and then taking the roots of this denominator so we would have z square by z minus 1 by 2 and z minus 1 by 4. So now in the z plane we have two poles the first pole is at 1 by 4 and the second pole is at 1 by 2 and this is our unit circle. Now since in the question it is mentioned that this system is causal. So this means that the ROC would be out of the outermost pole. So our ROC would be that is absolute value of that is greater than 1 by 2. So next we can take the partial fraction expansion. So this would be T1 over Z minus 1 by 2 plus C2 over Z minus 1 by 4. And it is fairly easy to solve the values of C1 and C2. So C1 would be equal to 2 and C2 is equivalent to minus 1. So we have 2 over z minus 1 by 2 minus 1 over z minus 1 by 4 and from here we have our R of So this was our h of z and from here we can take the inverse z transform. 
So we would have the impulse response HFN that would be to 1 by 2 raised to power n u of n minus 1 by 4 raised to power n and we have u of n. So that is the transfer function and the impulse response. Do note that over here it was mentioned that this is causal and we have inferred the ROC from that statement and eventually we have seen that the impulse response is in fact causal is zero when the time is less than zero. Note that in this example we have a second order difference equation and for this these are the constant coefficients. Now for the nth order difference equation we have a summation with coefficient a k y of n minus k where k is from 0 to say capital N and this capital N defines the order of difference equation so this is equivalent to coefficient b k multiplied by x of n minus k and again the k is from 0 to m and right now this m defines the order of difference for the input therefore we have a linear constant coefficient difference equation which is having an acronym of LCCDE now consequently if we take the z transform of this so from the time shifting property and the observation from this example that we have pulled out the value of y of z so we would have y of z and the coefficients would still be there which are from 0 to n a k and this order of the time shift would simply be z raised for minus k and similarly for the right hand side again we would have k 0 to m b k z minus k and this is x of z more generally our process function h of z is y of z by x of z and that is in terms of zeros which are dependent on this function b k z minus k and poles which are dependent on this function that is k 0 to n a k z minus k now from this we can get the algebraic expression of the proper function but again the ROC has to be inferred from the statement whether the system is causal or not whether it is stable or not so this brings us to the question that how we can infer causality and stability from the region of convergence of z transform that is how to infer causality and stability from the ROC of Z plane. Let us first discuss the causality. So we have these two definitions. The first definition states that a discrete time LKA system is causal if and only if the region of convergence of its system function is in the exterior of a circle including infinity so from the ROC plane it is outward and it includes the infinity if this is the condition then the system is causal otherwise it is not 
So the second property is actually more obvious and states that a discrete time LK system with rational system function H of Z is causal if and only if these two subconditions are met. That is the ROC is the exterior of a circle outside the outermost pole. So say we have multiple poles. If this is the rightmost pole, so the ROC would be outward of it. And lastly, over here we have with H of Z expressed as a ratio of polynomials in Z, the order of the numerator cannot be greater than the order of the denominator. For example, if we have H of Z, which is Z cube minus 2 Z square plus Z over Z square plus 1 by 4 Z plus 1 by 8. Now, in this case, the order of numerator is more than the order of denominator. So, as in order to solve this by partial fraction expansion, we have to perform the long division. So that is we would have z cube minus 2 z square plus z and over here we would have z square plus 1 by 4 z plus 1 by 2. So if we multiply by z we would have z cube plus 1 by 4 z square plus 1 by 8 z. So this would cancel off and we would have this would become minus. So this would be simply minus 2.25 z square minus 1 by 8 z plus this is 2 so plus 2. Whereas this h of z can be written in the form as follows that is z plus minus 2.25 z square minus 1 by 8 plus 2 over z square plus 1 by 4 z plus 1 by 8. Now this can be solved by partial fraction expansion but this is rather straightforward. That is z minus m as a transform as delta of n minus m. Right now we have z plus 1. So this would mean that this is simply delta of n plus 1. So the inverse t transform of this is simply delta of n plus 1. Since this is valid, this was 0 and this is minus 1. So we have delta of n plus 1 that is time advanced. So this is valid before time 0. So the system cannot be covered. So this is what is meant by uh, part b that with h of z expressed as a ratio of polynomials in z, the order of the numerator cannot be greater than the order of the denominator. Now let us move towards the stability aspect of the transfer function. Now for finding the stability using the transfer function that is h of z, we have very simple and standard definitions. The first one says that an LTI system is stable if and only if the region of convergence of its system function that is h of z includes the unit circle. So if this is our unit circle, this has to be included in the region of convergence either from this direction or from this direction. Moreover, a causal LTI system that is the system is causal and the transfer function h of z is in rational form. So then it would be stable if all the poles of h of z lie inside the unit circle. That is, they must all have magnitude smaller than 1. Let us understand this with help of three examples of z plane. 
each one is having a unit circle. So say we have two poles, the first one is at one by two and the second one is at two. So the ROC can be in three forms. We can have an ROC which is outward of the rightmost pole or we can have an ROC which is inward of the innermost pole or we can have an ROC which is in a circular ring or a strip. So let us try to find which one is causal and which one is stable. In the first case, the ROC is outward of the rightmost pole or outermost pole. So definitely this is causal. But the ROC does not cover the unit circle, so not stable. So in the second case, the region of convergence is inward of the innermost pole. So this is anti-causal. So more generally, it's non-causal. And again, it does not cover the unit circle, so it is unstable. That is not stable. So lastly, in the third case, the ROC is not outward of the rightmost pole or the outermost pole. So in this case, it is not causal. But at the same time, the unit circle is being covered. So this is stable. So of these three, only this case is stable. While only the first case was causal. So before we wind up the session, let us take one more example. So over here we have a system diagram where we have an input x of n that is passed through a summation and this is the direction. Again we have another summation over here and they reach a junction which we call as q of n. So from this q of n we have the first delay and we call it z inverse. So at this point this would be simply q of n minus 1 and this is now fed to this summation junction. Now from this junction we have another delay this is z minus 1 and over here now we would have q of n minus 2. Moreover we have an amplification in the first case of a1 and this is in terms of negative feedback and over here again we have an amplification in terms of an a2 and this is fed to the summation block in terms of negative feedback. So next from this junction we again have one more amplification say this is our k1 and we have a summation block over here. It is having a positive feed forward and then we have another summation block over here. It is fed to that summation block with a negative one and this is our output y of n. Moreover this junction is also having an amplification of say k2 and this is also having a positive feed forward and lastly q of n links with the output y of n with an amplification factor of k3 and it is also of positive value. Now we are asked to find the crosser function for this block diagram. So let us start with q of n first. So we have q of n which is equivalent to x of n minus a2 q of from here n minus 2 minus a1 q of n minus 1 from here. So we can bring these two uh, terms to the left side and then take the z transform so we would have a q of z which is simply 1 plus a z inverse plus this is a1 and a2 z minus 2 
and this is equivalent to x of z and we can say that q of z is simply 1 over 1 plus a1 z inverse plus a2 z minus 2 times x of z right now we are just solving the first portion of this block diagram so next we will be looking into this case and for that we have y of n this is equivalent to this k3 q of n plus k1 from here we have q of n minus 1 so q of n minus 1 plus k2 q of n minus 2 so again we can take the z transform so this will become y of z and from here using the time shifting property we would have q of z and as coefficients we would have k3 plus k1 and from here we would have z inverse plus k2 z minus 2 now we can plug in the value of q of z in this expression so we would have k3 plus k1 z inverse plus k2 z minus 2 times x of z and from the denominator of this expression we would have 1 plus a z inverse plus a2 z minus 2 this was y of z we can bring this y of z to the left side so this will become y of z by x of z and this is our power function h of z so over here we would have the same numerator and the denominator this concludes the discussion regarding transfer function linear constant coefficient difference equations stability and causality of a given system by means of the region of convergence of the plane and finally some reflections on the system diagram and how we can find the transfer function from it.